Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch podcast. I'm Matt. I am hosting, and with me are my two, I said ubiquitous during the pre-show, so now I guess I'm going back <laughs> to magnificent co-hosts, uh, Liz Harper, the EIC and total Grand High Poobah of the site, and Joe Perez, who is like a phantom, constantly stalking behind the things, making sure things happen. Uh, so these two fellas are with us. Or, not fellas, I shouldn't say fellas. These two people. Sorry. I'm having a weird week, guys. And I will be talking about Blizzard and its many games and maybe some other stuff, too. Uh, there's one story that's kind of intermediary where it's not directly about a Blizzard game, but it, it's kind of interesting to see. So we may talk about that if we have time. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, but before we get rolling, uh, Liz, Joe, what have you guys been up to? Trying to keep my head above water in this crazy world we live in. I mean, that's mm -hmm. kind of... That's life. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing with that one. Joe? Yeah, more or less. Uh, not really doing a whole heck of a lot, uh, just because I haven't had a whole lot of time. Trying to actually catch up on my backlog of games, uh, but I keep getting sucked into Hades, too, whenever I have a few spare minutes. Uh, I mean, that is still a game. You know, you, It's mm -hmm. in your backlog, and if you're not playing it. <laughs> Technically, it's not the backlog, because the game hasn't released yet. It's in early access. It's in the so, front log. <laughs> so it's in the future backlog. But uh, yeah, so we've got some various things to talk about. Um, a lot of them being World of Warcraft related because uh, there's there's reasons for that. Just, so we're going to jump in. Season. Yeah, we're going to jump in and talk about some of them right now. The uh, first one I'm going to talk about is just one that I thought was interesting. So uh, apparently you shouldn't level your characters, even your characters in the Mist of Pandaria remix until next week. And we've got a post on the site about it. Uh, talks about why you shouldn't do it, but the basic gist is with the warband features that are coming in, essentially leveling your alts, like especially sixty and up, it'll get much faster. And oh, they're go ahead. They're nerfing the total amount of experience you need to level, and they're doing this, you know, across all levels. But once you get to like sixty to that sixty to seventy band, it's the amount of experience you need is getting nerfed really hard. So. From 60 to 70, you'll probably be leveling four to five times faster. If you're leveling around Remix, you maybe don't need that extra speed. But if you, like me, have some characters in the 60s on the normal realms that you've been wanting to level, you should wait until the War Within pre-patch hits next week. I'm going to actually read a little bit from the uh, article that we have on the site. Uh, and it's it's from uh, Cal uh, Christian, and basically he makes the point that he he copied over a level sixty four character to the PTR, and she was from needing two hundred and seventy six thousand nine hundred and forty five experience on live to sixty five thousand five hundred and ten experience to go from sixty four to sixty five. That is that's a huge reduction. That's like literally mm -hmm. like like almost like dividing it by four. Um, so yeah, it's crazy how much th th this will affect leveling. So it does feel like if you like me, like uh, if, if you're watching the stream, I currently have my level 60 dwarf warrior that I didn't play this expansion because I already leveled four warriors to 70 and I was tired. Uh, but I've, I like my dwarf warrior and I'd love to play her. I currently have her sitting in Stormwind because I know as soon as next week comes along. And at this point we are exactly one week away from it. More to come oh on that. Gosh. Uh, I am Crazy. gonna play. I am gonna play these characters. I am gonna get my paladin ready and my other paladin ready and my shaman ready, and I'm just gonna go for it mm -hmm. um, because the uh, the experience thing is just amazing. So yeah, I, I I just feel like that's really worth knowing. I I I get what you're saying about WoW remakes. People are leveling so fast in WoW remakes, it doesn't and really matter. You I, and, you stack up you stack up all of your threads and your cloak that give bonus experience, and that adds up really really fast. Um. Uh, but yeah, if you have if you have retail characters, this is going to be the time to finish leveling them up. And I I have my Volpera warrior who's like sixty four, and I'd been grinding away on her. But I'm like, okay, no, no, now I think I, I I just need to wait a little while, and then I'll do this. I'll play remix to level new alts. Old alts can like just chill over there. Yeah. Okay. So next up, we can talk about. Well, since we mentioned it, we'll mention it again. The the next patch, the pre-patch for uh, The War Within, patch 11.0.1, is next week. It's exactly seven days from now. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're listening to... Well, it's, if you're listening to this, it's not. Ju but you know. July, July 23rd, The War Within pre-patch will be going live. Um, 
We suspect the pre-patch event, Radiant Echoes, is going live on July 30th, but I do not think that's been confirmed yet. I think we saw that on the PTR. So I kind of feel like there's probably a delay here because Blizzard wants to make sure they work out all of the kinks with uh, Warbands and everything that's launching with this pre-patch. And I'm pretty sure there will be some. Yeah, it's it's very likely that a system is not mm-hmm. elaborate as Warbands is going to is going to make you know, some changes. They, they they disabled character um, character restoration. You know, I think it will it will be it'll be suspended as of next week for that reason that they, a lot of character stuff has to change. And so, uh, one of the things that I was looking over the various things that are happening during the pre patch. And uh, so much. One, yeah, one of the changes that I really liked is the transmog changes. Uh, mm-hmm. Joe, have you seen the transmog changes? No, I have not. What are they? Well, first off, you can now learn every recipe, even if you can't equip it. Like if if something drops for your character, even if they're like you say you're playing your rogue and plate st- plate pieces drop, they will go into your collection. You won't be able to use them on your rogue, but you'll have learned them. So your character. Whatever characters you have on your your uh, account that can wear that look, will get that look. So you don't have to try to like log on multiple different times of characters to try and get various appearances. Like if you kill, uh, let's say Archimond, and Archimond drops the uh, the uh, the shoulders that they dropped, you will get them even if your character doesn't wear cloth. And mm. if you get a tear piece, you'll learn it even though you're not playing the character of that in that class. So if like you get a bunch of paladin gear that drops for you while you're doing a, you know, I, fr- I forget the one that I, I keep finding. I, I keep getting the paladin set over and over again. I th- it's the one from Battle for Azeroth. Uh, it's in the last raid. There's a really cool paladin set. Uh, anyway, you'll now just get it. Uh, and I think that's that's by itself. That's really cool. That is a, a very mm-hmm, good. Mm-hmm. Change. That's really really handy, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's a very cool like quality of life improvement for transmog in general. Yeah. It, Cause it, it makes just, it makes transmog in general, just e- easier to use without having to like take multiple steps. Like the idea of having to run the same raid or dungeon multiple times on different characters because you want different pieces for different characters, but you, you mm-hmm. there, you know, now you can just have a couple of dedicated transmog. I mean, car- transmog mules for lack of a better word, who just go farm all the transmog stuff for you. Um, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, so yeah, that, there's that. Um, we know that we're getting a bunch of different class changes. The hero talents are not coming in the pre-patch. Uh, if yeah, you're, you need to level and get more talent points to yeah. do those. So not yet. Yeah, we're not going to have hero talents or any of the, the specializations for therein. Uh, but you are getting a bunch of class changes. A lot of classes have had significant changes coming. And so there's various different things you can do, different builds, uh, new abilities that you might be able to get. Um, however, the thing that really gets me is that, you know, if you're playing a human, mm-hmm. your racial's gone. Then you know the racial I'm talking about. It's diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy is gone as of next week. If you're farming reputation on a human character for whatever reason, farm it harder. Because <laughs> after this week, it won't do anything for you anymore because it'll be gone. And I get why you would do that. It, it basically reputation is seems to be, it's going to be a big part of the war within. There's a lot of factions that you have to interact with and deal with. So I understand why you might want to do this. Cause I think we all saw during um, dragon flight that there was a pretty extensive rep grind and against multiple factions, it could, it could get pretty tedious. I know people who race change just to get to speed it up. And I don't think Blizzard wants people to be race changing because of a rep grind. So I understand why they're doing that. Uh, I don't think that the racial they're giving us is all that great. I don't think the idea of having an extra charge of your hearthstone and uh, less, you know, it, it recharges faster. I, I get the utility of it, but that's ultimately it's like we run away better. You know, it's like, um, I mean, I don't like that uh, one, guys. I mean, having a fat one thing is that cardstone cooldowns are already pretty fast. They're 15 yeah. minutes, I think. Now they'll be 10 the, minutes, with, like, and you'll have two charges. You can essentially hearth yeah. twice, like within 10 minutes. 
I mean, sometimes that's handy for turning in quests or getting back places. I, I can see where you would get some real world use in this. Because Volpera have a very similar ability where they have their, like, second Hearthstone thing. They can set up a camp somewhere, and then they can use their ability to go back to their camp. So it's like you got your two Hearthstones, sort of. And I find that I have this ability, and I rarely use it. Because I forget where my camp is, and I forget this button exists, but I always know I have a Hearthstone. So I think... I think I would get more use out of this than I get out of the Volpera racial travel thing. Hmm. I don't yeah, think you, I don't want to see you as a human. That doesn't make sense. Uh... You can't play as a human, <laughs> Joe. You can't play as a human either. Oh. Okay, hmm. that's fine. Joe should never play as a human in WoW. It's just wrong. <laughs> it's it's I wrong mean, when I did it. To, I feel be, bad about it. To, to be fair, I mean I do have a Kul'Tearn druid, but you know, does that count? I said a human. I didn't say Kul'Tearn. Although I know they are human, but still, it's they don't feel human. But regardless, you know, that racial is changing. Um, there's the dragon riding changes, which we've talked about a lot. I don't really know how to explain it more than we've already explained it, but I'll basically just give you a quick knockdown. There's, it's called sky riding. It doesn't affect you. It, do, it doesn't basically change much in terms of how sky riding works compared to dragon riding. Uh, it's there's, dragon riding with more maps. Yeah. And I think that, like, to a certain degree, you can get the various talents and stuff without necessarily going to um i can't remember the name of the island the dragon flight wow that's that's not great but regardless the you, you dragon don't... isles thank you the dragon isles i could not remember that no oh, geez it's again it's gonna win where there are dragons and it's an island it's a series of island. islands and there's dragons there i don't know <laughs> uh the dragon lands yeah. sure it's dragon lands whatever i don't know but regardless um I don't think you have to go there and, and do all the the little uh, find this place over here to get more to get another dragon riding talent. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. Um, I I don't remember how they sorted this out, but you should not have to trek all the way out to Veldraken or wherever to set up your dragon riding talents. But I don't remember what they're doing for this. There's a console command you can use to open up your dragon riding talents also and set them up. I, I believe on the in the in the beta they have something more streamlined than that, or they were going to make something more streamlined than that. It just it's gonna be there. It's gonna be there. isn't there yet, yeah. But um basically there's a there are some mounts that can't be used this way. Uh but not many. Like in the ones that, that you can't use for dragon riding are for specific reasons. Like the one that they've mentioned is the you know, otherworldly Autok carrier. Does, can't switch between the two. Um, and I think that's that's one of those mounts that is like literally like a lot. Doesn't it allow somebody else to ride it or something? Because it's it's got that whole like, you know scaling thing. Uh, but regardless, yeah, you, that one doesn't work. And there's a couple others. But most mounts will do sky riding, and which is, again, just dragon riding. It's not it's not a different yeah. thing. It's just but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I actually um, I'm kind of interested. I like that you don't have to do it. Like you can still stick with the old fashioned riding. You don't have to to dragon ride slash sky ride. Yeah, uh, there's an an option in the mount panel for where do I want to turn on sky riding? Do I just want to use normal flying? So yeah, as someone who's a little kind of yeah on dragon riding, I appreciate that I could just nope out of this one. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a huge win for accessibility, right? Like mm-hmm. Matt and I, Matt and I have have waxed about this. I think we we talked about it here on the the podcast as, as well the anything that makes the game more accessible for people is a win and dragon riding and having it be an optional thing is one of those items there are plenty of people that can't do dragon riding whether it's motion sickness uh reflexes there are people who play the game that don't have the manual dexterity to do dragon riding and before any of you at home say it's not that hard Yes, it can be. It can absolutely be that hard, um, especially when you have to make tight turns. And then if you can't fly back up the hill, like in the Azure span, because you ran out of vigor. So you have to no choice but to sit and wait because you hit a tree. Uh, you know, this at least allows people to fly normally, which will give them, you know, basically back the game. They'll have their mobility back, which I think is a huge, huge win. Yeah, I also think, you know, quite frankly, guys, sometimes you don't. You don't realize how much 
you don't have the Twitch reflexes that you used to have mm-hmm. until you just don't have it. And you're like, oh, wow, okay, I can't do this. Um, okay. I have very much been like that lately. But, of course, the other kind of bad part about this is that we're going out when the expansion launches. We're going out to Kazalgar, and it's only Dragon Raid on Kazalgar. We will not have the option to not use the the sky riding style system. You have to use the dragon riding interface. And uh, until we get to the end of the expansion, you do some kind of Pathfinder-like achievement. Um, and that's that's kind of disappointing because, you know, it's like Joe was just saying, this is a win for accessibility for the people who have trouble with dragon riding. And we're getting this win for a little while right now, and then it's going away again. Yeah, I mean, it's fair to say that it would be nice if you didn't necessarily need to use dragon riding to fly around places. Um, I mean, just off the top of my head, one thing they could do is that if you don't want to do the dragon riding mechanics, that you could just basically set a a place that you want to go Mm -hmm. and have your dragon riding just basically taxi you to that place. Uh, The the downside being that it's slower uh, if you're doing it that way. And instead of using the dragon riding system, which allows you to go faster when you do various things. But, you know, this is just me. It's easy for me to come up and say this stuff. It's not like I'm actually involved in it. So I do like that we have flying from the beginning, but I think they have to decide. Can everyone use flying or can everyone not use flying? Because as it is going in and saying you can sky ride at the beginning, but just do normal steady flight later, you're saying, okay, a lot of people who aren't good at dragon riding aren't able to do dragon riding can't fly this expansion but some people can fly because they have better reflexes or better vision or don't get motion sick so i almost feel like it would be better for them to have said okay you don't get flying until the end of the expansion because then it would be an even an even ground or you could even have it be zone by zone like you Mm -hmm. you complete the zones quests at the end of it you can get sky riding for that zone because uh, you've you've learned the dangers in the air there, and then you go to the next zone because they're all underground zones. So yeah. you you then go to the next zone, and you have to read you have to do it all again. You have to basically complete the uh, the the quest in the area to get your sky riding. And I think that might like- be worthwhile. And and it would not it would not basically be punishing people because you'd have you basically everybody would have to still do this stuff on foot. And mm-hmm. then it's just a matter of convenience if you want. And with that one, do you want sky riding in this area? Because you're not going to be here until you're level 70. And by then, everybody will have regular flying. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it, there are ways to do it, I think. But regardless, that's one of the things that, that's changing in the, uh, in the new This patch. is the system we got. Yep. <clears throat> Should probably talk about the Radiant Echoes event. Because that is coming. Although we won't get it immediately. Not immediately. We, uh, we don't have an official release date on it yet. Sorry, I'm hitting the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking, but I, you, know, you can't hear me. But basically... Uh, there's like the, the thing that's kind of cool to me is that you're basically going to get a cur- new currency that allows you to buy uh, item level 480 warbound uh, warband bound gear that has the azurite colored you know faction mounts as well. There's pets and there's I think uh, there's an heirloom ring. Yeah, here it is. Uh, the band of radiant echoes. So there's a lot of interesting stuff. The as far as I can tell, the 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 re- heirloom ring which goes to to like. The, it goes as part of the regalia of fabled adventurers. Mm-hmm. Um, it basically allows you to get your set bonus up a little higher. It doesn't it doesn't give you experience boost anymore because I think they've basically kind of you know handled that just with how experience is going to work coming forward. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to, to taking part in it. We don't know exactly when we're going to get it. We don't even know quite what the radiant echoes are. I mean, it's I mean... it's kind of like we know what they are in terms of like we've seen that they're basically like bosses from um, from previous parts of the expansion showing up and, and doing stuff and we have to like you know kill them but it's still like i don't know how this ties into the new expansion yet we're fighting um, the memories of azeroth yeah but, uh, one thing i will say about the gear you get from radiant echoes it's gonna be good stuff to upgrade all of those art alts you've just leveled in wow remakes or the alts you're leveling next week when the patch goes live and we get that big experience nerf because what, you said that was 480 gear yeah. from Radiant Echoes? 480, 480 believe, item level is the stuff you can buy. Uh, I believe level 70 characters from WoW Remix, when the Remix ends and you're moved back over to the live servers, I believe you're getting 415 gear. 
So this is going to be a big upgrade. And any new alt level just on the normal realms, uh, you know, a fresh 70 doesn't have 480 gear. So this will be a good way to get any of those characters you've leveled right here at the end of the expansion up and ready to go into the War Within on day one, if that's what yep. you want. And that's pretty cool. But since we mentioned it as part of this one, that the gear is warband bound, which means you could basically mm-hmm. switch it between your various warband characters. We should talk about the fact that the warbands are coming. Um, you, you're, you're not going to get some things, but the warbands are consolidating character and account progression type stuff, as this headline says. I, I very nicely read you the headline from the article. <laughs> um, but I do think that it's really kind of cool because your your per character choices are now going to be your per account choices, essentially. They're going to just, your your characters are going to get the benefit of all this kind of thing in the Warband. The Warband even has its own bank. Mm-hmm. So you don't necessarily have to create bank alts anymore and mail stuff to yourself. Uh, it's you a just, real... Yeah. There's a lot of good changes. It's a real, yeah, it's a real sea change in how we've done things in World of Warcraft. I mean, we have those transmog changes. You're going and, uh, you know, running old raids for transmog and you're getting stuff for your entire warband. Uh, now, as you, I, it, it's just going to make everything easier. You know, transferring items, transferring currency. You don't have to, you know, this warbound gear. You don't have to just mail it. I mean, we have a count bound gear right now that you can get and mail to an alt, but you aren't going to have to do that. You just drop it in your war bank. Someone else picks it up and equips it. It's it's taken the middleman out. It's just taking the kind of annoying little middle parts out of all of this. And you, so you'll be able to do currency transfers and things like that without nearly as much hassle now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, some there are lots of currencies in the game that you can't transfer at all. But that's going to be a lot easier to do with warbands and just share everything. So yeah. it's you, the player, doing things and achieving things and not one specific character doing things and achieving things. Which makes uh, sense! Joe, uh, I know you've played a lot more of the more modern MMOs than I have. I kind of have pretty much just played WoW lately. Uh, you played both FF14 and uh, Guild Wars 2, right? Yep. Do you think this is at all related to how those games kind of handle character de- pro- progression significantly differently? Like I was thinking about the jobs and how you can switch jobs in uh, in Final Fantasy, and yeah, yeah, that that was the first thing I thought of. So I don't know. I don't know that it's ever a direct response to that, but I think it is an effort to remain <sighs> competitive. Seems like a weird word. Relevant, I think, is more accurate. Um, the problem that you run into with WoW, and we've talked about this all the time, is that class structure is relatively stagnant outside of like the confines of an expansion. So like next expansion, we're getting extra talents, blah, et cetera. That's refreshes some of the experience, but ultimately the experience isn't that wildly different from the core value or core experience that was presented back when WoW was released in 2004. So you look at other games that released after it, final fantasy 14, where it lets you have the freedom to explore different classes with the same character. Uh, you look at Guild Wars 2, where everything is tied to your weapon choices and your masteries and how you choose to allocate and activate what it is and basically gives you way more customization over your character than you have in other games. And I think WoW looks at that, Blizzard looks at that and says, okay, well, how do we stay relevant? How do we you know, make it more interesting. How do we add some form of value to it? So maybe there is something to it where they're, they're, you know, trying to compete with those games a little bit in that regard, or maybe they're just realizing that the core experience has been level character, select talent point, go in world, kill more stuff, level character, select talent point for 20 years, because that's what Mm -hmm. it's been. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know that I would say that it's that it's necessarily competing versus maybe realizing their own stagnancy. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I just was going to say it's a fair point. Uh, but society's to blame. And then I was be like, <laughs> no, no one's going to get my Monty Python reference. But then Joe got it, so now I feel better about myself. Anyway, though, we've talked about that for a bit. Um, that's pretty much what we're getting in Phase 4. Or not, not Phase 4. God. <laughs> that's what we're getting in the pre-patch. Phase 4 is about a different thing that I was about to move to. <laughs> Which is that WoW Classics Season of Discord, Season of Discovery, Season of Discord. Season of Discord, because we're all in Discord talking about it. Um, 
They've got a new 55 and up dungeon, which is called Demon Fall Caverns, which if it's actually based on a zone that exists in current WoW. It's not like a the Demon the Demon Fall uh, Valley or one. I think it's called Valley. I don't remember, but you can go there in game right now, and there's a bunch of demons there, and you know you get to see the kind of memorial to uh, you know Gromash Hellstream because he died there fighting uh, Manoroth to save the orcs and all that. Uh, and now it's a dungeon and uh, phase four. So it's actually kind of interesting how you go to this dungeon too, because it's, you have to basically be wearing a certain kind of gear in order for the instance portal to appear. If you don't have this, this gear that you get from the factions in question, you can't go to this dungeon. So I, I'm kind of interested. Uh, I mean, I'll be up front. I don't think I'm going to get to go anytime soon because I just don't, I, I don't have the time for all this guys. I, I have so many there's, things I have to do. There's a lot going on all the time. There's a lot of games to play out there and it's, I have also had trouble finding the time to play uh season of discovery, even though it sounds really cool and they keep adding these neat little extras. Uh, one of the things in season of discovery that uh, Nick wrote a post on tonight uh this evening this afternoon is uh they've added some new like little trinkets and some of them are specific to classes like warriors can get sunshades which are a you know a helmet which are basically just sunglasses yeah but it's it's only warriors from a specific quest paladins can get a squire again by doing a specific quest and again only paladins and it's uh, you can get your own little Squire Cuthbert. So uh, obviously, who doesn't want their own Squire? So there you go. But it's only in Season of Discovery, and these are all just neat little things that players have found by wandering in the game world. And I I kind of love it. I love it. Don't have time to play it. That's a problem. Yeah, pretty much. It is just one of those things. I don't even have time. Like, to, I don't have enough time to play all the regular WoW I want. And then then I. Yeah, I, I just can't, guys. I'm sorry. There's, there's also the Diablo stuff I have to do. So, uh -huh. but yeah, that's that's happening fairly soon. Uh, I think the the phase is already out, right? Phase four is already out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, phase four is live right now. I can I can't always keep track. Oh. Um. Yeah, d jump on there, level to sixty, get yourself some sunglasses, run a new dungeon that we have never seen before. Pretty great. Uh, should talk about this one, which I managed to miss entirely. Uh. There's a change to um, Season 1 for the War Within's uh, Nerubar Palace raid buff. It's called Severed Strands, and it's been changed. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. It, it was essentially called the Rebel, Rebel uh, Yell buff before? Um, well, I mean, they're, they're building this. Have you read about this, Joe? Uh, I've been reading it while I've been kind of sitting here, so a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of a thing that's going to nerf the raid, essentially, as weeks progress, because you'll be collecting more of these severed strands buffs as you go that um, are going to... So as as you play the raid, you will collect items you can turn in, Nerubar Nir Finery, that you can turn in for a raid buff that gives you a 3% increase to your damage and healing. So... I do not know how often these the finery drops. Are you getting one a week? Uh, but you can grab these, turn them in, and you get a buff. And currently, it goes up to thir to fifteen stacks, which means a forty five percent buff to damage and healing. So if you keep running the if you keep running the raid, you if you're struggling, you're going to struggle a little less every week. So. I, I think that's cool. It's going to make it, it's going to help players get through and see the content. It's not necessarily pushing them along too fast, but it opens stuff up. So you're not going to like get to the second to last boss and get stuck for three months or whatever. Um, you're going to keep pushing forward. It's going to keep you moving. So I, I, I dig it. But this I, is. I'm interested to see if they, if it works in a way where people end up stacking it. Like for, I mean, not not for not for the content that's current. Like imagine if you're doing really well on the content that's current, can you save yeah. this stuff and use it for the next level of it? Like could you go to, to farm it up on normal 
and then do heroic and use this immediately to get you, you know, say you get like five stacks of it. Now you're going into heroic with like um, 15% extra damage and healing. Like, will, will it work for that? Or do you have to get the same thing, but it, you have to get a different drop to get it in I, heroic. I and, don't, I don't know. I'm only seeing. <laughs> it would make sense if it was a different drop for each difficulty, but I don't know. Yeah. That's the thing is I I don't know either. I'm just thinking it would be interesting to find out. Well, I mean, what did they say about it? That it's it's going to be leveraging the similar to like the reorigination array was in old year, mm-hmm. but doing it in a quest sort of progression. Um, so it's as far as the drop rate goes, I don't know that it's going to be much different than you know one per week or whatever it is because if i remember correctly the old year just increased per week i don't think it increased per difficulty so hmm. I, I that would be my guess yeah but i don't i don't think we know for sure and i mean i think all all we know for sure is that you're going to get this item and using it or turning it in is going to get you this buff it's the buff itself just says the severed threads lend you their aid increasing your damage and healing done while inside Narubar Palace by 3%. It doesn't talk about difficulties or anything mm-hmm, else. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this may well just be effective across all difficulties. Yeah, that that's what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be the quest mm-hmm. that, like, you just get that increase, and that increase applies. So if you're at 3%, you're at 3% no matter what difficulty you're in. Mm. Right? That would be That would be my guess. Again, they haven't said anything about it. Uh, and maybe we'll we'll get some more information about that soon, hopefully, because I think it's a, a, a neat idea. Uh, but that would be that would be my guess as far as that goes. Yeah, that makes sense, and it would be interesting to see if you then have some guilds who don't use it mm-hmm. until they're go- until they're trading up to the next difficulty level. Like, okay, we've been down here for a while. We're going to try and do mythic now. So, yeah, everybody start using those things. Yeah, but um, you know. Sorry, I'm one also thing. trying to change character. I'm one of my characters. I'm I'm currently putting their gear back on because I haven't played them this expansion. So they gave you the whole you know get this new gear upgrade thing. So <laughs> I got it, and it it took all my gear down significantly because I had a full set of the gear you got uh, by doing the event that started Dragonflight. <laughs> so I actually made my character worse. So I was like, oh, good. now I got to go to the mailbox and pick up all my old gear. So that's what I've been doing instead of you know useful things. Uh, but yeah, I feel like we talked about the this, this strands thing. Uh, Cataclysm um, Classic Phase 2, do we want to talk about that, or do you want to say one thing else about Severed Strands? Uh, one thing else about Severed Strands is that we do know that the War Within Season 1 is starting on September 10th. So, I mean, Blizzard has a while to kind of balance this out and decide exactly how it's going to work. Hopefully they do. Uh, but yeah, Cataclysm Classic uh, Phase 2 is going live on July 19th, which is... This week, uh, yeah, uh, PTR, 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 PTR. Okay, the PTR so, is going uh, live. Okay, yes, yeah. that's better. We, I was like, that's kind of soon, but okay. Yeah, because they they just see you did the exact same thing I did today when Nick told me he said it's going live on the nineteenth, and I'm like, what? Did they just drop this today, and it's going live in three days? How was this even a thing? And then I went back and actually read what he said, which was the PTR is going live on the nineteenth, but that also says. A little something about the release date, which we had, Blizzard has said, uh, Phase 2 is coming out in July, and it's like we're running out of July. Our prediction for the phase release date was July 23rd, which is next week, and it would, it would fit in the pattern of Blizzard torturing its server people, because that would be the same date, the Hearthstone expansion is coming out in the same date, the War Within pre-patch is coming out. So, I mean, maybe they have learned to not release everything at exactly the same time, and it's going to come out the following week. But we will see. We will see how long of PTR this is, and uh, if if they make July like they'd originally said it was going to launch in. I keep pushing the wrong button. Yeah, that 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 is something we should probably find out about, guys. Uh, but we should also talk about... For, well, there's a couple of Diablo things to talk about. The first one is that we're going to get a reveal for the Spiritborn class... Uh, for Diablo 4, the upcoming expansion, uh, Vessel of Hatred. We're going to see that on the 18th, which is two days as we're recording this. You could be, it could be like, the, it could be your, the current day when, if you're, when you're listening to it, or it could have happened already. But, well, we'll probably be talking about this a lot more next week. Yeah. Um, all we can tell you is that they're doing it. They're going to have a preview. They're going to, you know, stream it and you get to watch it. And then they'll, you'll find out 
what the Spiritborn's all about. I mean, we kind of already know what they're all about, but we haven't actually gotten to see them in play. We yet. haven't seen any details. We've got kind of the big picture look at the Spiritborn, but it is real skimpy on specifics. So hopefully we're going to find all of this stuff out. Yeah. Uh, I do want to mention this because I didn't notice this. Somehow I managed to miss it. Uh, Microsoft has increased the Game Pass price, mm. um, which if you're using Game Pass, which I have been, that's kind of they're I guess they're putting a tier in too, uh, where you don't there's, get there's, games. Yeah, there's there's more to than just the price increase. We should probably break it down yeah, real quick. Do you mind? Joe, go for it. Yeah. So uh, yes, there is some price increases. So the Xbox Pass Ultimate is going to be going up, at least in the US, your equivalent price change. Well, you'll have to look at your region equivalents here, but it's going from sixteen ninety nine a month to nineteen ninety nine per month. Uh, it will include the day one titles as well as access to Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, and you get your uh, PC and console games uh, like Diablo from Blizzard as well. Uh, there's PC Game Pass uh, in the U.S. The price change will go from nine ninety nine to eleven ninety nine per month for all new members, which should be already in effect. Uh, all these should already be in effect. I think it was July tenth they went live. Uh, yeah. This one gives you a access to the library of games. Uh, for Windows 10 or 11, but does not have the ga- day one game uh, game titles. Uh, those trickle through as they decide that they're now available to you. Uh, there's Game Pass Core, uh, which is a monthly price, which is going to stay at $9.99. Uh, but the 12 month price uh, ch- will change. We'll go from the $59.99, which was a reduced uh, price, to $74.99, which is still technically reduced. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be just a small collection of online games for the Xbox game console. Uh, and then the game pass standard, which is the new tier, which is going to come in at 1499 a month when it launches, uh, provides access to all the benefits of game pass core game pass standard will not, however, include day one release games. Uh, so anything that is released for the ultimate that, that you get access to may be added later to game pass standard. But there is no guarantee. Uh, One thing is Game Pass Core is basically that's what the old Xbox Live was. This is your access to multiplayer gaming. It lets you online. I think that's included in in everything from Core Up, right? Yeah, it's included everything from Core Up. But I think the name change in this one really kind of threw me. That's just your that's kind of your multiplayer tier. And also you get a handful of games. And standard is replacing the old console only tier, uh, which I'm I'm a console only person, so that does affect me because console is going away. Except I think as long as I never unsubscribe, I think I can keep my console subscription. I'm I'm gonna find out <laughs> uh, because console is less expensive than Game Pass standard. Yeah, it's it's. Obvious, honestly, it's an inevitable thing. Everything's yeah. been going up, right? Yeah. Uh, subscription prices, like your Netflix just increased and everything else just increased. Um, and to be fair, and I'm not going to just completely poo-poo all over Microsoft. I could. I just don't have the time. Um, <laughs> it hasn't increased. When's the last time that everything did get a price increase? It's been a while. I, I'm I've been sure. at least four years. Because yeah. I, I got Game Pass when I got my Xbox uh series x so yeah it's it's been at least four years so i mean it is bad but in the context of everything else generally increasing almost every year i think playstation went through two or three years of that happening pretty back to back um but like 16.99 to 19.99 a month after four years is not necessarily the end of the world it sucks because it's a few extra bucks out of your pocket but i mean yeah and it sucks because, you know, it's everyone is taking a few extra butts, bucks out of our pocket oh, at sure. the same time. So that all adds up. And I would mostly say Xbox Live, um, Xbox Game Pass has been such an amazing deal for so long. It yeah. has been far be- and away better than any other game subscription service. I mean, to be priced really well, to to be fair, I mean, I I, I, I was going to say, I would argue that it's still a really good value. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that same thing, even with the increase in price, it's, it's still a bargain compared to especially what you get. And and, and, it's a less good value though. It was like gold standard for value. And now it's like, 
it's less. And also you have to subscribe to that to that top tier if you want to get those day one games, which have been a huge selling pass and have gotten a lot of people hooked on Game Pass. So it's it's an inevitability it's an inevitability that there are going to be price increases. And it's also kind of like, oh man, at some point my budget is not going to cover all of these little yeah, a dollar here, a dollar there, price increases, because it, it and, adds up. It's adding up. Yeah, and, and I would argue that I, th- I still think that the even with the game one or day one games, uh, you know, in that increased tier, it still does make a good case for it being a pretty good value. But for you to decide at home what value you're getting out of each tier, mm-hmm. highly encourage you to go to the Xbox.com slash, you know, Game Pass uh uh, website and they have it where you can actually select the membership level uh, and it will tell you every game that's available for it on the website which I will say I am very grateful that they do in a very easy to find way uh, because PlayStation Sony still does not do that in a way where you can easily see what you get at what tier of their content uh, which I will forever scream into the void about that until they fix that because man that is a pet peeve of mine it's so confusing and I don't, why can't we just all pick names for things and stick with them instead of changing the names and the tiers? I mean, a lot of services do this. I mean, if you look into streaming, a bunch of services are adding, oh, well, now we're just sneaking in a new ad supported tier. And then here's another tier if you want to use more than one device. And here's, you know, just keep it simple. Yeah. Ah. Because it kind of encourages you. It's like, okay, I want this, and I don't understand what's going on here. I just have to subscribe to the highest tier so I know I get everything. Which is always going to be a pain, but again, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we could talk about I this mean, for, for another several hours. It's it, it stinks, but it's not unexpected. Yeah, it was going to happen sooner or later, and you could argue that it happened a lot later than it might have. I but nevertheless, it's, 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 it's not great. We can always talk about our old friend Hasbro and how they wait like ten years to do price increases, and then when they do, it like cripples everything. Yeah, we could, <laughs> but we're not going to because again, we do have only so much time. About. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to jump into this one. Uh, our fr- our friends over at Ubisoft, we don't cover, but if we did, wow, we would have things to tell you we to can, say about we Ubisoft. Can, we can cover them. That's well, this, fine. This one I'm going to cover because it was compared directly to Diablo Four, and apparently. The Division 2 has is, is been out, and they were going to try and borrow Diablo 4 season model. Yeah. Specifically, the one where you start over, like you're, you start over with a completely new character and get back up through it, and then the next season comes, you do it again. And people didn't like that. And like a lot of people who played Diablo 4 who've never played Diablo games before were really upset about the fact that you'd, ever, you'd have to start over every season mm-hmm. to get to see the new content in the season. And but people were like responding with that's the way it's always been. That's the way it's been in the original ladder seasons in, in Diablo two. That's the way it is in Diablo three. That's how Diablo does it. So in the end, a lot of people just you know held their nose and went along with it. But that's not how it's been in the division like ever. The division has never used this formula. Almost nobody does. Um, I think, you know, Diablo 4, various Diablo games are pretty much the only ones I can think of off the top of my head who do. If others do, they, they're they not particularly notable. Uh, although, watch, it's going to be Fortnite, does it? Uh, but regardless, yeah, Division 2's player base... Fortnite does start you clean every season. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but, like I said. But, but that, that's, all, that's, <laughs> for, that's for a different reason. That's because of battle passes. Yeah, but regardless, uh, as I understand it, uh, the Division 2's re- player's response was what you might call pitchforks and torches. <laughs> and yeah. Ubisoft has has backed down because they're like, oh, oh no, oh no, everything's on fire. Nobody wants to play our game anymore. So yeah, that happened. And so now we've got the the season model still exists, but but it now no longer has anything particularly significant about it to distinguish it from just playing the Division. So yeah, that's happening. I don't know what to tell people about it, but nevertheless, that's happening. Uh, what do you guys think? Is this like going to be? Are we going to see changes to Diablo's seasonal model, or is this just a case of this game's fans will not take what this game's fans will because they're just not used to it? I hope that the Diablo Four seasonal model changes, but that's because I refuse to play the current Diablo Four seasons. 
um, because I put all that time and investment into my character. Like I, I've been very vocal about this, so I'm not going to harp on it too much. And my stance is pretty well known. I understand in certain circumstances when you reset for a season, it can make a certain amount of sense. Things like a battle pass where you're not really building up a single character, but you're collecting items or cosmetics make sense that your battle pass level resets and you have to earn it all over again. I that Rocket League was always like that. Fortnite was like that after Rocket League, but they were only cosmetic items and it wasn't really you being personified in the character, not in the same way. Diablo 3, I could kind of understand it to a point because you weren't heavy into the RPG elements in Diablo 3. There were definitely elements there, but you were sort of, for lack of a better term, not front and center of the story. You were you were there. Diablo 4 went out of its way massively to essentially make you front and center, give you a voice, which is the first time that's ever happened in a Diablo game. Uh, make you feel responsible for the choices you make because you do make choices in the game and then have a very complex and rewarding leveling system past max level and then say, by the way, you got to do it all over again every season. And I think it felt worse there. Division players were in that camp, right? Sorry, go ahead. Mm. One of the things that was so weird about Diablo is at the initial release of the game, they're like, yeah, our game is so hardcore. It's going to take you 150 hours to reach level 100 and finish the game. And it's like, and you're telling me I have to do this every three months? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? How much time do you think I have? Yeah, and and the every three months thing, I think, is an important factor because, like, we were originally, I'm not going to say that we were sold on something we didn't get because we were kind of maybe overhyped on it a little bit where seasons yeah, were going to bring big so. story stuff. And it was going to, we were told that they're going to be more similar to like, wow, content updates. Um, that's what mm-hmm. the press was around this. And then we got them and I'm not saying that they weren't substantial, but they didn't feel like that. Right. They didn't, at least to me, and maybe some people feel differently. I'm, I'm Go- saying they weren't substantial. Yeah. And I trust you your, don't have to say that. <laughs> yeah. And I trust your opinion on it. Cause you've actually played through it where I, I just flat out refused. But I do think that stuff like this is going to force developers to look at how they engage player time if it keeps happening. And I think that's the larger discussion. And I'm sorry, I'm going to talk a little bit about this because I feel very strongly about this. Player engagement is the one metric that we've talked about over the years that they seem to really care about in the game space, especially the AAA game space. They want you locked into their ecosystem. They want you spending time in their in their game it, so that you buy stuff from their shops, that you're more likely to spend more money. That's just the way psychology works. It's the casino theory all over again. You trap somebody in a room where they have all the shiny lights and bells and whistles, and you put them there as long as you can, and you don't give them windows so that they can see the outside world and they lose track of time, they're going to spend more money there. That works. That's just retail 101 as well. Um, the think stuff like this, where you see a very passionate group of people, because the people that play Division 2 and continue to play Divisional, Division 2 are very passionate about it, and they are very vocal about it. Um for them to react like that, I think others might take notice and be, hey, maybe we would have better engagement if we just had a better product that people wanted to play, as opposed to forcing them to feel captured for 150 hours every three months. Maybe maybe mm-hmm. that'll help. Uh, I so will I- say the Diablo team has significantly reduced the amount of time it takes to level. It's yeah, still they commitment, have. Though. The principle yeah, stands. It's a commitment. Yes. Especially so, when yeah. you especially when you have systems that, that in place that reward you beyond max level. And I think that's the, the, the hiccup, right? So like any game that rewards you for going above a leveling system cap and then has like a paragon system uh, or you know, something that lets you continue to level past whatever the air quote level cap is to invest in a character, that's when it feels worse. In a game like again, Rocket League, you're not investing in a character you're just getting cosmetics. You're getting to the end of a reward track. So every season when it resets, you don't feel bad about it because your car is still your car. It just has a shinier set of wheels or whatever the <laughs> case is. Right. So there, there's a fine line between that. And I think we as players, especially when a game as good as Diablo four was when the story and as, as engaging as it was, as much as it sucked you into it, and made you really invested in your character because it really did. They did a really good yeah. job at that. 
and then saying, by the way, throw your character out and go start a new one every season, that just feels bad. So I'm I'm hoping that they reevaluate it. At this point, we have just enough time, I think, to do one of our questions. Oh, I didn't mention the black mar- market auction house thing yet. Uh, their black market auction house has various goodies that have been around, but they're going away in August. Uh, I think they says through August, and then they're going away. So yeah, once they're August at the is end over, of August. Once August, August is over this thirty first. So that's you have that much time left to go and, and check out the black market auction house. I'm sure they'll have new stuff after that. It's but, it's not on the auction house directly. It's you go to where the auction house is and talk to Miss Zulian, who sells all of this uh, transmog and amount that's all shiny and gold, which, I mean, is appropriate because it's all really expensive and it's going to cost you a lot of gold coins. So there you go. You've got a month. Well, a month and a half. It does. I've got to say, I kind of want this golden scarab mount. But the only way I'm going to get 1.2 million gold to buy a golden scarab is if I spend a lot of money buying WoW tokens, yeah, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't recommend. But it, it's it's very pretty. It's very shiny. Ugh, I, I love it. I love it, but I'm never going to be able to afford it. <sighs> Regardless, uh, that's that's something that you should know, because if you're like us and you're a transmog fiend, you may have not realized mm-hmm. that you only have a month before you won't be able to get that stuff anymore. So, yeah, get get over there and get your golden bug that you can ride around on. And, it's and, a flying golden bug. Yeah, you know, bug. that makes it even you, better. You know, you want if you, it. Col- if you collected all those those bugs from Anne Carage, it's like that, except it has wings and it flies. And also it's very golden. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm suddenly yawning a lot, so I think my body is telling me I'm going to be sleeping soon. So I'm going to try to get us into at least one of these questions. Uh, if you've got a question for the show, um, you can send it through email to uh, podcast at blizzardwatch.com with the subject line podcast of Blizzard Watch, so we know it's for the show. Or you can go to our Blizzard Watch Discord. We've got two channels. One is just Q and podcast questions where anybody, you know, can come on in, even if they're not an actual patron for the site, and ask a question. And then there's the patron Q and podcast questions channel, which we do look at first. Uh, and that one, you can basically ask a question there if you're a patron, which means, you know, that, that way we're rewarding you for helping us. It's like, help us to help you, this sort of situation. Um I'm going to go with this one because it's kind of funny to me. Uh, it is I, Roxy Goblin Shaman, here with a question about Shaman. After being a meme for all of Alpha and Beta, Shaman changes, uh, lovingly referenced to by the community as the package. And I'm sorry, I'm making a joke about the whole, what's that outside? Package, package. Anyway, has arrived bringing massive changes to the Shaman class uh, trees, uh, elemental trees, uh, restoration tree and some minor changes to the enhancement tree. It also saw the retirement of wind fury totem from enhancement to become the new shaman raid buff sky fury, which maintains the wind fury effect with a mastery buff, no longer limited to just your party. How are you all feeling about the direction of the shaman class in the war within Liz, if you'd mind talking to us about it, about I'm talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I was being, Matt, I was, Matt, Matt's you know, being was, Matt. Yeah, it was, was me. Well, I was over here zoning out because I'm like, oh, yeah, Joe's going to talk about this. And then it's like, Liz, wait, yeah. wait, did I miss something? Are we, what? <laughs> wait, should I talk about paladins? No, no. Uh, what's happening? Yeah. Uh. So anyway, uh, Joe, I'm going to talk now about Shaman for, no, I'm kidding. Go, go, <laughs> man. I mean, there's really not much to say, right? Like it's, we are in a, a very interesting spot. And I was actually talking with a couple other folks that uh, play Shaman uh, and raid uh, uh, at a higher level than I than I am willing to do uh, this weekend about it, and it's this is the first expansion where we felt strong on paper going like on the the beta going on paper into it, and then looking at everything, and they just continue to make more changes that make us more. We're better on paper now. We're better in the beta now and stronger in the beta now than I really anticipated to the point where Phil from the site and I literally at one point made a comment about how we were going to eat our hats because we 100% expected to be nerfed. Uh, yeah. And yes, the shaman community has been referring to it as the package. Um, everything seems to be moving towards making the class more viable long-term 
And I think that's really important. One of the things that I've complained about about the class for years now is just like mastery, it's very spiky. There are points where it's really, really good and the strongest thing you can play. Um, and then there are other expansions where it's or, or, or even just, you know, content release updates, tiers where it's borderline unplayable uh, or just completely broken. I'm reminded of certain elements or areas of Battle for Azeroth where Restoration Shaman were clearing up the bottom of the ladder of everything. Uh, you couldn't find an enhancement shaman to save your life because it wasn't even worth playing. Uh, and now we're getting to a point where it feels like they're looking at all three specs and holistically just trying to make them better. And there is a lot of feedback from the community that I think they're listening to. Like the wind fury thing is something we've been asking for since burning crusade. And I'm not joking about that. Having wind fury be party only, while so many other buffs and, and things are raid wide is was awful. And giving it to now Sky Fury and having it be a new raid buff for everyone makes it so much better. It also makes it better for raid teams, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, putting the the enhancement shaman and making sure you have that enhancement shaman in a very specific group, making sure that everybody in that group gets the maximum benefit from it. I mean, even my guild who we raid and we, 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 we raid to win. We don't exactly, we're not exactly the, the try hardiest of groups. We like to more have fun. <laughs> At least I feel that way. Even we would make sure that if we had an enhancement shaman, that it was going in very specific groups with very specific people, because if you didn't, you were just leaving a lot of damage on the table. This, I just click a button. Everybody gets the buff. It doesn't matter. It's a fantastic change. So I think they're looking at making it more holistically viable and long-term. And I think they're looking at Elemental in particular. And I can hear Roxy, like, like I can hear the blood pressure about the pop. And I'm sorry, Roxy. Elemental has been boring for a very long time, at least for me. You cast the same three spells. And then there's either moments where you are doing an absolute buttload of DPS where nobody can touch you. Or you just fall so far behind that... There's and there's no variance, right? You can't really change the play style all that much. And they're looking at that and it seems like they're trying to give you more ways to play the class and they're trying to make it more viable so that it can actually keep up. And the same with enhancement. I think I saw one enhancement shaman, the entire expansion that of Dragonflight one, and it wasn't even in our raid. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I think these are holistically all going to be better changes trying to make the class a little more sustainable and not and putting it into a place where they don't have to do all the tweaks that they've had to do in the past with buffing it or debuffing it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So. All right. Uh, thank you, Joe. That allowed me to sit here for a little while, ride around Stormwind and kind of be like nodding off like an old guy on a rocking chair on a porch going, in my day, we had Sentra Totem and that's all we needed. It was all we needed. Well, that, that, you know, old stuff. You just want shirt. me to scream about Sentry Totem for like an hour. Stop it. No. <laughs> I'm not going to be on the show. Listen, my, listen, you know, listen. I still, about I, still, I still have the t shirt design I made of three Sentry Totem Moon. So, like, I, I will get that. I, I, listen, that could be, that could be sight merch at some point. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. That'd be great. I would like, I would like that as a hooded sweatshirt. Uh, I would also want, if you had like a shaman themed hooded sweatshirt, the hood would actually be a very badly drawn wolf in honor of that wolf helmet that you used to be able to get. That was just not right in the slightest. I wasn't even sure if it was supposed to be a wolf or a cat. Like it, 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 oh, it was not clear. No. Also fun fact for those of you in our discord server, uh, my icon is my face strapped to a manatee totem. Just, just so you know, that's who he is. Uh, but yeah, that, so that's that's question. I think that's pretty much it for the show, though. So now I'm going to do the thing where I turn to Joe and say, speaking of Sentry Totem, Joe. Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means that this podcast signing community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, a better chance at having your question answered on our podcast for the queue and an ads free site experience. Uh, thank you very much, Joe, and thank you to both Joe and Liz for being here and making it so that we have a show and not just me talking about Sentry Totem for an hour and a half, uh, because <laughs> I'll do it. I'm crazy. Uh, 
thanks to everybody here for listening with us. If you've gotten a question for the show, again, you can ask us on our Discord. We've got both the Q and Podcast Questions channel for everybody and the Patron Q and Podcast Questions channel for patrons because patrons, you know, keep the water wheel turning so that we have a site. Um, or you can email us at podcast at blizzardwatch.com and just add the subject line podcast to blizzardwatch so we know it's for the show. Thank you guys very much. And uh, we'll be back next week. <laughs>